earthy sort of person, but it is not my God. It is not a God. It doesn't have any power. And we have mistreated it. I know we've mistreated it, but it's, the earth is perfectly capable of refurbishing itself. I was about to it's say, very, Charlie, uh, Ch Charlie Daniels, our guest, they don't care about the environment, these globalists. They've got a lot of people that, that follow them that do, that are misguided. It's all about a power grab. Under Agenda 21, Obama can shut down coal power plants that his buddies don't own, and he's done it. And then that makes General Electric and others, who, by the way, are tax exempt under this fraud, they make giant profits. It's about monopolies. And when you talk about the Food Safety Act, you're right. Big Pharma and Big Agro wrote it to shut down family farms. I mean, look at them going after the Amish. I'm just backing you up here, Charlie. Look at them going after people with lemonade stands. Look at them going after gardens. The system does not want us self-sufficient. Well, you know what the next move's going to be, don't you? It's going to be coming after your gun. Oh, yeah. There is something afoot here right now. I don't know exactly what it is, but there's something. And the one thing that really scares me is the fact that we are one Supreme Court justice away from Obama doing just about any damn thing he wants to do. I mean, if you can't get it through the Congress, the Cong Congress and Senate would never have enough guts to try to take people's guns away from them. They would not do it. They know it would be political suicide, but if it's done through the Supreme Court, it becomes the law of the land. I tell you, it ain't going to sit well down my way at all. It ain't going to sit well. But if they come out and people say, well, I will not give them my gun to take about one or two Ruby Ridges and Wacos to convince people, hey, it ain't worth it. You know, and that's that's how deep this thing goes. It's, you know, it, it's it scares the heck out of me. I'm 75 years old. You know, I mean, I don't know if I'll ever see this stuff implemented or not, but I got a kid and I got grandkids, and I don't want to see them live in a world that Big Brother runs, and you got to worry about some Nazi type as so we come knocking on the door in the middle of the night and taking you to task about some opinion that you have. A hate crime opinion. You know, to me, what is a hate crime? I mean, you know, if you kill somebody, you must hate them. <laughs> I mean, how many exactly. times do you kill somebody? If you hate somebody, if it's a hate crime, do you kill them twice? What is it? You know, what's the difference? So, you know, I, this stuff, this, these little things in this Obamacare thing that was passed. We have a congressman named Bart Gordon in Tennessee that he was not going to run again. He voted again. He voted for the Obamacare knowing that his constituency did not want it. He had disappeared. Nobody even knows where he's at. I tried to call him out. He owes it to the people who put him in office to come out and tell us why he voted for it. And now we see Obama, Charlie Daniels is our guest right now, giving 2,000-plus companies waivers. So, again, his buddies get waivers from what he does. That's total discrimination. But going back to the Second Amendment, as you know, I know you're a big supporter of them, uh, the NRA – uh, and, and, and and they're usually pretty you know conservative about what they say. They have the intel, and the Washington Times reported on this last year, that in his second term, uh, he is going to try to ban semi-autos. And then we got documents that he told uh, the, the Brady campaign, don't worry, I'm going to do it, quote, under the radar. And, re and remember that tape that got recorded he didn't know people have where he said, yeah, these Bible-hugging, you know, gun-hugging, uh, bitter clingers, and so absolutely, sir, they are coming after our guns. What about Fast and Furious, where Obama shipped guns into Mexico and CBS got the memos to blame the Second Amendment? Well, I, you know, uh, I think Eric Holder, for the two things, he should have been, either, if he did that, he should be impeached and run out of office. He claims he didn't know about it. If he did, he should be run out for incompetence. How do you cross guns into a sovereign nation across international borders, and nobody knows about it except the peons that work in the thing. Now, just tell me, how, did, how do you do that? If the Obama administration is that incompetent, if they can do that, if they can carry guns across state lines, I mean, across international borders and give them to people, or I mean, in, in essence, that's what happened. It's not that they didn't actually carry them across themselves. I mean, once, and you don't know about it, it's going on in your department, will you fire everybody in your department if you, if they, you know? But this guy knew about it. He had to know about it. There's no way Holder didn't know about that thing. I don't care what he said. And I honestly, and I will accuse him of lying if he says he don't know anything about it. He knew it. He knew it early on. He didn't do anything about it. He's such an arrogant SOB that he thinks that anything he does, he can get away with. And, you know, this is just any other administration would have fired him two years ago. And he, this guy's wreaking havoc with America. 
he's wreaking havoc in 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 Arizona. People knew what was going on in Arizona. I met the family of a rancher, a third generation or so rancher in Texas who was killed by people coming across the border. I mean, this is a family. This is a good American family that's been to, that make a good, honest living off the land and are good people. And their father and their husband have been killed by these people who come across the border. This is what's happening in all along the border. You don't hear about it. But every time somebody comes across, uh, some of these people come across, certainly they come across, they just want to make a living, okay? You, you want to make a living, you want to do it, go do it like everybody, my people did when they came over from Ireland and other people when they came to Germany and Israel and all these places, they immigrated here. Why? Just because they live next to us. People from Canada can't do that. People from Canada can't walk, walk across the border. This is so daggone totally political. And so base expanding and so, you know, a, a contingency thing that we, well, we can get as many voters. We get, what? Tell me something. How can you go into a bank and cash a check and it make you put out a, a picture ID? I can't get you playing with that put the picture ID. I can't vote in my state. And they know who I am. I vote the same polls all the time. But you got to present that ID before they're going to let you vote. And you mean to tell me that it's right to let people go vote and we don't even know if they're citizens? Well, Charlie, as you know, uh, all over the country, right here in Austin, they let the illegals basically vote. They let them get bank accounts with no ID. But I've got to go show three sometimes at my bank. The point is is that the government elite are on top, the illegals are second, citizens are third class, and the government just ignores laws whenever they want. Uh, it's totally lawless. This is globalism. Now, talking about Agenda 21 and this whole world government situation, I'm seeing a huge awakening. Arizona's on the verge of passing it. Another state has passed a law against it. Uh, other states are passing laws against the NDAA to secretly arrest Americans. It does look like there is an awakening happening. And to go back to that song you had about, you know, America waking up and getting, you know, together uh, again, you know, we damn sure fooled you. I think we're on the cusp of another big awakening. I certainly hope you're right. I hope you're right. I was I was involved in National Day of Prayer, you know, yesterday and I was making speeches. And one of the big things I was talking about, the further away we get from God, the more lost we get. And, I mean, it's just a, it's, it's an absolute fact. That, and, and this thing of uh, being upset when you see a cross somewhere or something and this little handful of people want to remove, you know, and they'll tell you, these people will tell you now, just rank and file citizens, well, this constitutional separation of church and state, it's not in the Constitution. It says nothing about separation of church and state. It says Congress shall pass no law concerning religion. That's that right. Congress can make no law, and they, and they take a letter from Thomas Jefferson saying he didn't want to have one church, a uh, one state religion, and they twist it. So instead, the government runs a religion, and they say that's the Constitution. When that's the opposite, government cannot touch it, cannot do anything. Zero. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Charlie Daniels, you are absolutely on target. Well, you know the, 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 that part of the law, the Constitution, was to protect the church from the from the government, not the government from the church. And it, it's, it's all twisted around. But you know, if, if we start talking about you know things that offend you, I see stuff all the time that offend me. But I'm not going to go out and do a protest about it because I, you know, I don't I don't like it if other people want to, you know, have lewd pictures up and that sort of thing. I don't have to look at. It. I, can walk, I can walk right by it. Don't bother me. Why can't they do the same thing with the cross? It's like these people just go around and look for little things that, and what the, the situation is, it's not separation of church and state, it's separation of God and state. That's what they want to do. Well, sir, as you know, they want to replace it with this fake environmentalism, Agenda 21. They admit in the U.N. they want a global religion. They said that at the last big U.N. summit that Lord Moncton and... Uh, Others that were there saw and got the documents on. This is a cult. And you notice it's just Christianity. They're even telling people not to wear shirts with a cross on it in the mall now. It's an idea that you don't have freedom of speech in this country. Oh, we have freedom of speech in this country. And I will wear any dead blame thing I'm pleased to. And, you know, I mean, that's just a situation. You know, I, I hope people, people listening, people don't be intimidated. Don't be intimidated by this stuff. That, that, that. 
biggest part of these things that you're hearing are not law. They're not law in this country. Separation of church and state is not law. It's not constitutional. Uh, this thing, Agenda 21, that we're, we're talking about, please don't take my word for it. I don't want you to take my word for it. I want you to believe it. So go look it up on your Internet. Go check it for yourself. It is very real. It's been going on since back in the 70s. Some of the most powerful people in the world are connected to it and endorsing it and promoting it. And the U.N., which in my book should be the bill that should be pushed into the East River or turned into a homeless hotel and run them people out of here, let them go to Paris. Uh, it's just a toothless debating society, anti-American debating society, I should say. Can you, can you imagine these idiots running anything? They can't find their way to the bathroom. And they want to run, they want to take over our national parks. They want to say what we can do with our food chain and what kind of animals we can raise and this sort of thing. It ain't, it's just like you said a while ago, this is total paragraph, total control. Expanding on that, uh, break down what you cover in the film Behold a Pale Horse. Well, it, it, this basically could be pale, uh, uh, Behold a Pale Horse goes into Agenda 21. It explains it more fully. It talks about the things that are going on that have been going on and where they're headed, uh, how far this thing goes. It talks about it's about a a global and I, I I hesitate to use the word conspiracy because it's been so overused and so. But let's let's say a a lot of people in the world, very powerful people, presidents, high politicians in other places, the biggest bankers in the world. Uh, the media moguls, the, the people that basically run the big media, that run the, 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 the networks, the governments, the industry, the big industry, the big banks. They have Charlie, stay media. there. So, sorry to interrupt you. we got a break. I want to come back and get into this. And it's a local okay, Fredericksburg, uh, Central Texas filmmaker, and it's got Joel Skousen, Edwin Vieira, Larry Pratt. Man, all these great people in it. Of course, it's narrated by the one, the only, Charlie Daniels, who's on with us right now. CharlieDaniels.com's his site. My site's InfoWars.com. Stay with us. We'll be right back. There's a war on for your mind. By the way, Behold a Pale Horse with Charlie Daniels just came out, and my crew reminded me, hey, the, the guy that made that lives out in Fredericksburg. He wanted you to be in it. That's why everybody's in it but you. And it just fell through the cracks, just like Aaron Russo tried to get me in America Freedom to fascism. I have got to start being in these films, but it doesn't matter. Uh, I haven't seen it yet. I hear it's powerful. Folks can just Google Behold a Pale Horse film uh, and uh, find it out there or, or Behold a Pale Horse Charlie Daniels and not confuse it with the book that's out there by William Cooper. And uh, I can't wait to, to see it and uh, and certainly have the filmmaker on. Another great Texan out there. Finishing up with Behold a Pale Horse, Charlie has agreed to stay with us 20 minutes of the next hour to take calls on any issue you want to raise for him, 800-259-9231 on this Friday edition, 800-259-9231 to talk to the legendary Charlie Daniels. Doesn't get any more country than that, doesn't get any better fiddling than that. And uh, he joins us again right now. Uh, uh, briefly getting back into Behold a Pell Horse, and then I've got a question for you.